Well, I can't think of a more Fast and Furious thing to do for an ending than to go over the board and make it three parts instead of your standard two. Not that I'm complaining, I'm just confused what they'll call the next two. Will it be Fast 11 and 12, or Fast X Part 2 and 3, or, even better, Fast 11 colon Fast X Part 2? Say what you will about this series, but it's never failed to have a more inconsistent, yet consistently dumb naming convention. Fast X is part one of the trilogy to conclude this long-running franchise. All the main players are back, plus new additions like Brie Larson, Alan Richardson, Daniela Manchier, and Jason Momoa in the greatest performance of his career. Dom and his crew are being hunted down by Jason Momoa, and the only way to stop him is through the power of family, fast cars, and pure, unbridled chaos. Look, if you're someone that's been curious about the Fast and Furious series, and for some reason you think this is where your starting point should be, I have some serious questions and concerns. It's like saying you want to start the DCEU and your starting point is Black Adam. All you'll get is confusion and misery. But, if you're a longtime fan of the series like me, this is a great start to what will hopefully be a stupidly giant finale. All the trademarks of the series are present and accounted for. Insane over-the-top action, Vin Diesel saying family a lie, Tyrese Gibson and Ludacris getting in pissing contests with one another, all here, and it's always fun to see. While most series at this point in their lives would feel washed out and stale because of using similar tropes, Fast X, in my eyes, is able to get away with reusing these tropes because of the sincerity behind them. The relationships these characters have with not just each other, but the audience ourselves, is reminiscent of going to a family reunion and interacting with that uncle you see once every few years. They may repeat the same story about them getting lost in the supermarket with a llama, but you laugh and enjoy it just as much as the first time you saw it. Not every single series and film needs to have its characters go through some big transformative arc that redefines them by the end of the film. If you have well-defined and established characters, then the lack of an arc doesn't matter because we don't feel like we're missing out on anything. The only thing in my eyes that can make the series worse is if the action got lower in quality. When the series started, there wasn't really anything spectacular about the action, if it ever appeared, or its racing. But as the series went on, the action and racing grew with the filmmaking. They began to put in more effort and in doing so helped redefine the series into what it is today. You don't see action scenes like this too often anymore and if this film is any indication, we need more like it. Every race and action scene had me on the edge of my seat, not just because I love these characters, but because of how engaging they were to watch. Mixing practical effects with CG and relocation brings a breath of fresh air to a landscape of action films dominated by the superhero genre. The stakes are always clear and far more pressing than they have been in the past, and there's this sense of danger that always hasn't been present in the series. For the most part, I don't know if a character that dies in this three-part finale will show up again by the end. While I can't say for myself it's a tearjerker of a film, you do feel when shit hits the fan. But, if there's one thing this film does that's a major improvement over every film before it, it's give us a batshit insane villain that's an absolute ball to watch. This series never really had a compelling or interesting villain to watch until Furious 7, but even then that was just Jason Statham doing what he does best. Nothing bad about that, but this series has always needed a villain that can match the insanity of the series, and Jason Momoa is the perfect man for the job. Every second he's on screen, you feel terrified to be in the same room as him, but you're also having such a blast watching him steal every scene that you don't mind if he stabs you and steals your kidney. While he isn't the main character like, say, Thanos in Infinity War, his presence is always felt, and every time he showed up, I got giddy with excitement. I hope that throughout this finale, we see him more and more, and that Momoa just keeps cranking up the insanity with each entry. Now, if there's anything I will complain about, it's the over-reliance on the spy agency angle that the series has fallen into. Up until 7, these characters have either been doing their own thing, working with the cops or the FBI, just nothing too insane. But once Kurt Russell showed up in 7 with a case of Corona, I knew something was up. While I don't think this agency angle was bad for that film, in 8 and 9, it felt like it was taking this series further away from what made it work in the past, even when it was going more insane. I hope that as this finale goes on, we get further and further away from that and we get back to the roots of the series, because it will feel not only more fitting, but it'll present more interesting challenges for our heroes that basically have nothing fighting against someone that has everything. And the story. The story has never really mattered with these films. Like most great action films, the story is there mainly to get us two great action set pieces. The Mission Impossible films do this, the John Wick films do this, and the Fast and Furious films do this. Thankfully, they simplify the story here even further to basically Aquaman wants revenge and Groot needs to figure out how to stop him. There's no secret government agent devices to find, no complex world ending computer hackers, just two beefy guys punching each other with their cars. While I'm not going to spoil anything, despite this not being titled part one, this film does leave off on a pretty big cliffhanger that might make some people mad at the lack of finality. But 
In true multi-parter fashion, if you want people to see how it ends, you've got to make an ending that makes them want to see what happens next. Also, stay for that mid credit scene. I can't stress that enough. Fast X is everything you've come to expect from a Fast and Furious film, whether you see that as a good thing or not. If you're someone that's only seen a few films in passing, or have never really cared for the series, then this won't be the film for you. If you're a longtime fan, I think you're going to love this one. While we still have to wait to see how it'll all end, if the next two parts are anything like this, I'll happily wait as long as it takes. I'm going to give Fast X an 8 out of 10.